Hi guys, welcome to yet another motherfucking motherfucking episode, baby, of Horrible Decisions. I'm your girl Mandy V, aka That Bitch, aka uh, apparently I'm a keep pet the stallion, aka Peg McCartney. I really like that. Um, I what, bro? Hate that. You don't like Peg McCartney? I just feel like it's not a good enough play on Paul. Okay, here we go. AKA Peg and Markle. Peg <laughs> Ryan was cuter. I can't be Peg and Markle. Okay. Ooh, v. I could see her pegging for okay, sure. Not can for we not talk about? Sure. Is he even a prince? Yeah, you he's just always from keep over your there. title. Okay, he's some. Well, they don't boot because they in that. Real Housewives, that countess never let us fucking forget she was at, right. <laughs> okay, she yeah. never. I don't know. You're I've still never, a countess. I've never even watched an episode divorced. of a Housewives. I'd like to admit that right now. Okay. Never oh my watched. god, I am obsessed. <laughs> I'm oh. obsessed. Can you introduce yourself though, y'all? I'm too easy well, and I'm appalled. <laughs> we are here with Lisa <laughs> Ann, who. Wait, what? Wait, is that really just the intro she gets? No, we're no. going to get it in a minute. Okay. Stop. She's you appalled. don't watch She's any real right housewives? <laughs> I honestly feel like you and I have had the same Are you, conversation. You, I don't, you just said you went to a plant-based diet and you don't watch real housewives. Wait, like, I, how do those two come mold. together? You fit the mold. Except I'm single. Okay, except I'm not married. Girl, all housewives be single too, baby. <laughs> you think married people have time to watch They don't even shit? be wives. No, they don't. That's they true. don't even have houses. A lot of them, they be building for years. They own houses on the show. Okay, they so do. I'm sorry. <laughs> let me explain myself. Okay, I'm I, I watch a lot of sports, of course, so that consumes probably eighty percent of my television. Um, other than that, I watch either documentaries or the only reality shows I watch are like uh, Shark Tank or people are going to build something or fix a business or do something. But my one friend in California does get me on these total just like weed and 90 day fiance benders. Oh, oh my God. God. So now you like her. Oh God. Lisa, I waited for you to say it. I don't know if anyone is going to see this, but in my face, I was like, she won't say it. Lisa, you don't understand. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. Let me explain something to you. Oh, boy. TLC but wait, wait. For those of you who are also as a, new, as a, a host for an after show because of the content I've done, but almost anyone I've ever done a voice for for the cast has heard it, seen it. We've talked. We had someone on here that did, you don't understand. It's in my blood, I feel like. I need you to go right I, now. Give us give us three to no, five. No, you got to tell me your favorite. Wait, give us three uh, to five names and accents. Wait, do you do the accents too, Lisa? I, we do do the accent. Tell me you like Angela. Okay. <laughs> and Michael. I like Angela and Michael. <laughs> I just don't understand how you go out of your country to go to live with a man and you don't know that you live in the middle of nowhere. Oh. That you can't walk around or do nothing. I can tell day. you how. Have you ever had really good dick before? How good can his dick be? I mean, maybe I, you've had enough. I was like, <laughs> what I can say is. You think his dick is that good? I think that people have never, for one, I think, no offense, the white women that are on this show that move, yeah, I think they've never seen anything like that. Like they're dating men from exotic countries. They can't even like say Morocco. They can't point it on a map. They don't know it's in Africa. Like, Bitch, I think I, they're so I enamored really with the- <laughs> But you know, I don't be knowing- You're talking about the American women going there. Yeah. Because right now I'm on the the women coming to America. Uh, oh, the French girl that's supposed to come? And the Russian, the two Russian girls were in this episode. I love them both. They both look- Wait, fun. the Russian girl we had on the pod? No, not that one. Oh. The but, one who's dating okay, Javi? But now that you're flipping the script and talking about Americans going there, I could completely agree with oh, you. Oh, everybody I mean, wants to come to America. They think this is the land of women the... want to fuck in other countries because especially like in Europe and especially because in Europe, most of the men are not circumcised, which I am down with. Same. And it's something that is so frowned upon here. <laughs> especially if you want to have anal sex. I'm over like here frowning. Uncircumcised <laughs> wait, penis wait, wait. is so much better for anal Why sex. is uncircumcised so much better for anal? Because it really gives flexibility as you're opening up and adjusting. Instead of the skin being so tight and pulling, it actually gives with the skin, right? Because you have the hood going over the penis as it's going inside of you. Instead of just this, and it, oh my God. Like when I started doing scenes and I you know, was starting to really investigate, okay, I'm going to start doing anal scenes. Then I really started, I was like, I'm only going to do my first couple anal scenes with guys that aren't circumcised. Because every woman had told me how much less it hurts and how much softer it is because of that additional skin. Well, you know what, guys? Y'all, for those of you, first off, now we have to we now we have to how introduce many who the fuck is doctors in here. have we had on here? <laughs> I gay know. men, and no one ever said, no one said that fuck for you, Vinny. Tips. He has never difference. ever told <laughs> me. No, damn, oh, not fuck Vinny. He's uncircumcised. My best 
friend. Oh, oh yeah, and he and no, he's oh. gay. But <laughs> Darn it. I was like, we, I have sex with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is black. <laughs> well, I'll go there. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> well, let's do the intro. Yeah, sure. we have to do the intro for those of you. Uh, I feel like we are actually sitting next to a legend right now. Actually, um, I watched you for so many years. If your also, height is on Wikipedia, definitely you're famous. Uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> we have a fake celebrity famous website that made up shit about us. Like, oh, it was really excited? yeah. It just it was wasn't good. good. It was cool at first until they were like oh oh they said i accepted my um my white father and you don't do you remember that and i don't have a white daddy they were saying our biracialness yeah and, yeah and it was you couldn't this- reach somebody to get a change just like wikipedia right so you're not five two i am five two <laughs> <laughs> but there are some inaccurate things you sometimes find on wikipedia no i'm you know sure that. yeah like the net worth they got on google right now ain't accurate uh but we do have uh like i said a legend here in the house today we have that's of lisa and and why i'm so excited to have her a lot of you guys have probably come across her we've had porn categories on here um and she has popped up in like the top search like a lot of the top search uh categories <laughs> that Thank you, of- feverish masturbators for also taking part in the poll Feverish masturbators. <laughs> Feverish masturbators. Um, I would say the categories, and, and let me know if I left any off, that I feel like you would be most found in would be uh, gangbang interracial, mm-hmm. um, gangbang, mm-hmm. um, MILF, mm-hmm. MILF for sure, and celebrity parody, which we're going to get into. Mm-hmm. Um have I left any out? I know recently you did, you just did as your last scene, you did some anal, which was a big deal. But I did, we'll, an, but I've done anal since 2008 or 2005. So I've been doing anal, but what it was, my last two GP. scenes were virtual reality. It was my first oh, wow. two real Ooh. VR scenes and I felt like, oh. little did I tell anybody that those were my last scenes in the industry. I right. shot them in October and November, 2019. Uh, but it was just the perfect way to close it because I felt like if I didn't do it, my career would have been totally time stamped by technology. Like, oh, she must have left the business before the equipment got good enough because now the equipment, the camera that you're actually making love to, even though there's a male performer there, you've got to focus fully on the camera to get that POV, even oh. has the ASMR ears on it. Really? So that when you go to breathe on one side, your viewer is going to hear it on one side. Nice. You go to talk. Oh. So it, that's you're, like, that's you're, 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 you're just using the camera. So you get that close to it. That's so cool. it and comes to you. Well, these are expensive. This, How much is that shit? And, and the, the poor guy's laying there just doing his thing, keeping you active. But he's and really have cut to off like, and you've got to awkwardly, but kind of coolly. Because if you visualize what's going to happen once it's produced, then mm-hmm. you get it. And you're like, oh, I want to talk. I've this never year. imagined how hard POV probably is to shoot. Then. It is because you are you're paying guy. attention to the camera, not the guy. And the guy has to be bent in a position that's really uncomfortable for him in order to give get the you. Camera. Yes. I didn't what's it? Was it that. called Gonzo sometimes? Uh, POV and Gonzo kind of were around the same time. Another thing is the guy, when he's losing his edge, he can't do what he normally would do. Normally he would caress you or touch your breast, but his hands aren't allowed to come into the camera oh. frame because it's POV and the guy's supposed to not see hands. That'll just yeah, fuck it all. Especially because right. what terrible. if it's a black guy yeah. watching it and there's white hands right. that show up? Either like, way. E- it does, doesn't work Speaking of that, I recently found out through a friend of mine, he was like, I can't watch white guys in porn. And I'm like, why? Like, he can't watch what? He's like, I, I have to imagine myself in it. I mean, so you said that he can't watch white guys. He no. likes POV. Me neither. Now. I don't like pink dick, though. So that's why I don't watch it. Man, I told you I'll be finding some tan ones sometimes. We, but then they got to be super tatted because then they look a little dark. Did you know that not all white dicks are pink, though? Like, not there's a lot of brown. The Euro dicks are brown, yeah. though. I promise you they're brown. It's like when the blood I've goes got a through it, it's like you see the blood. That's why they pink, because the blood is rushing and it changed. If the, the guy's skin is like translucent, see? yes, yeah. this can happen. But that's see what a I mean? really I white guy, picks, like a but... northern, uh, maybe northern Canada or um, Switzerland. That's that really or translucent New York in the winter. skin. What? <laughs> it's just cold. No, no, no. The brown dick. I mean, like I had an Eastern Europe stint. So basically, oh, the best. Right? It was like I took a map. I feel like I took tax and just kept fucking. But now I'm 30 and we can't travel. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> or I'd still be fucking all over Europe. <laughs> Wait a second. Did you ever get Mexican dick? No, I haven't had chorizo yet, but I'm not opposed. Chorizo. Oh, chorizo. That's chorizo. crazy. Well, I had Italian sausage, right? Yep. I've had lot beef. I had a Jamaican plant in. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a, a Haitian hot dog mm-hmm. but a hot you know dog spaghetti. It's the height. Like, and this is no, like. You're, this, hot, you're about to height shame. It's okay. No, like, I'm not height shaming. I'm Do being it. honest. Do it. 
She's a height supremacist. We no, all are. I am too. I am too. <laughs> we all are, but like mine is not that we all are. Give me I five ten, ten at least. I mean, if you're fucking shorter than me, we got a real problem. Yeah, you five too. Because I'm five too. At that point, I can't put any at, shoes on. But guess what? At that point, y'all could park up close if you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> like, but still. wait, is that is that is that problematic? No, it was just enough. <laughs> just just really? told the fucking line. I will tell you this: my real dad is five two, and my mom's five eleven. And it wow. was just atrocious seeing them together. I don't know how <laughs> they ever even engaged with each other. Um, he was charming and she was young. And, you know, we're, I'm still part of the generation that my mom admitted to me. Well, you know, we didn't have sex till we get mar- got married, you know, when I was oh. young. And I was, was like, she well, like not lying. She was not lying. <laughs> I always thought everybody they was weren't allowed, like, I ain't gonna lie I thought they were just keeping it to themselves they was punching baby you fucking married a stranger they never even went on vacation and spent the night together before they got married that's Whoa. when you know you want to break up of course of you ever course. had a friend bad friend vacation not because they're broke because they're annoying because they're fucking annoying as hell and then you're like never go anywhere with them again right you hate them almost but you'll still hang out with them casually exactly because they're on time and you gotta cool even to do staycations with. for anyone that's listening at that your place cannot 48 hours see how we hang because like, i mean i did i did i did miami already with my boyfriend i want to do a staycation only be- and here i go i'm thinking it's for our mental health i'm like let's just get away but get a room it's for fun he's like you just want fucking hotel sex and it's i was different. like i'm really trying here it's different it's so good mm-hmm. we had the nastiest fucking sex we've ever had and we've been God, together I for wish almost I was a year in that now hotel oh Honey, I love listening to people have sex. With honey, I okay, love that's it. weird. Honey, unless I really need to sleep. Oh, at this point, I know they heard us down the halls and everything. Okay. I'm, they probably heard us in the <laughs> lobby, and we was on the seventh floor. I would have timed it. First thing I do is time it. So time. As I start hearing it, I look at the digital. I'm like, okay, it's 11:07. Let's see how got along this guy lasts. Then Last, I my man to- goes five times. Every time. This is what I want to hear. I feel good about everybody in that situation. But sometimes <laughs> it dies off really quick. You know, you're in the bed going at a certain pace. And I'm like, he's losing his edge. It's going to happen. Yep, yep, yep. Boom. It's quiet. Shower starts running. I'm like, oh. Shower starts shower running. Start- no, bitch. You know why the shower started running? Why? That's bitch. Fucking in the shower. No, because oh. he was like, I got to go pee. I oh. was so nasty. I sat on the toilet and said, you could pee right here. Oh. I was real nasty in the goddamn hotel room. Yes, bitch, I did it. And I can't believe it either. So the- Wait, wait, wait. I you, know. How, I are know. Are you more appalled over this <laughs> than you were appalled over the fact that I've never watched an episode of uh, The Housewife. Housewife? I couldn't believe no, it either. No, that was more shocking. I couldn't believe it either. <laughs> she, she's done some pee stuff before. But I'm only saying no. because he had to pee, you went to the toilet. It wasn't even like- No, he had to. So you know like how sometimes uh, as women, we'd be like, all right, babe, stop. I got to go pee. Like, yeah. I don't keep- we we got to we'll get a you'll UTI. get cramps yeah or you'll get cramps or it, it's just not cramps. nice yeah. so like in between our rounds he was like okay I gotta go pee because we were we were drinking as well I was like I'm n- no so he was like no babe I gotta go pee <laughs> so he went to the toilet and I slid in and sat on the seat and I said you could go pee and I opened my legs so that the pee just fell alcohol? into the is this a just alcohol oh this was just alcohol oh baby wow. I'm a drinker baby. <laughs> Need that little. sounds like a coke story I think it's ecstasy or something I'm thinking you mixed it up a little bit I mean we're both black we're not really doing coke okay there's Mandy other... that is not fucking true oh no no bro black people get but down but not my friends how long have you been with said boyfriend you don't know that uh, we have been together it's crazy because I know we're going to do lunch I, I told him to pull up Ooh. to our lunch hopefully so we'll see uh, we've been together for almost a year Okay, congratulations. You made it through the toughest time possible, which was the pandemic. Yeah, nigga had me go on hiking and shit. I was a new bitch. I was like, <laughs> hey, in the hiking shit like being nature. the thing. He does. He I does like that. nature. That I literally had happy. to tell him like, this weekend, we need right. to go on a date because I want to dress up. I sure. want to wear heels. Sure. I want to look cute. Sure. Um, I also know we were talking about dicks, so I wanted to go back to that because okay. that's very, very important, important here. Very, very important. And so for our vanilla shit, um, we're I guess we're talking a little bit about science today, and y'all know I don't really believe it, so yes. I want to know if you believe what this is. <laughs> it says that penises <laughs> are shrinking because of pollution, um, and this is warned by env- environmental scientists. It says, in case you needed another reason to care about the climate crisis, it has been found that pollution is causing human penises to shrink. I read that article yesterday. I did oh, some follow-up I research. Oh, come on, follow-up. I did. I did oh. follow-up fucking research to see if anyone else was covering this bullshit. And I realized... 
they're just knowing that the men do not care about the environment as much as we women do. I care about the environment. I don't That's use a plastics. Fair assessment. Okay. Um, I am very anti. Like if I eat takeout at your restaurant and you don't use biodegradable con- containers, I won't eat there. If you use foam, oh. styrofoam, anything that doesn't biodegrade, I won't not eat there. So I am the person that's in my oh, girl, where we go and got plastic straw. It's okay. Oh, we'll okay. But what, but what's great is when you finally accomplish the mission and you go to the restaurant and they're like, yes, we've decided to make the switch and we're using biodegradable containers. I'm like, I'll fucking order this a burrito from you. This is very LA Every, of you. So, <laughs> no, it's actually the Pennsylvania and how do you, I grew up like this. Do you call I, and ask? Uh, yes, I survey before I order. <laughs> yes. So if I want to do the, 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 if I want the delivery, then I have to call the restaurant. Then I have a ton of questions. Uh, but this is like my commitment to shopping in a black owned business. Okay. Yeah. I also got rid of all plastics in my house. I only use uh, glass. So I will do the water and put it in glass bottles or I'll buy water that comes in the paper cart. I do like a mason jar. That gives a vibe. It does give a vibe. Um, <laughs> I, I, so I think they're afraid men will only care if we point it to the most important thing on their body, which is their penis. Second thing I think is this, and this is a personal survey because, you know, I'm very fortunate. I own a lot of my content from the industry. A lot of those beautiful gangbangs. I I produced all that content. A lot of dicks. So when I produce that content, I'm now able to recycle it on OnlyFans. So I'm able to have a new photo set going up every day. And what I'm learning from OnlyFans is men are more insecure about their penis size. Oh, from the rating, the size? Than Ever in my whole life, men were never insecure when I was young. Remember, I'm 48. I'll be 49 in May. I've seen the attitudes of young men change. And what I've learned is, A, they're watching way too much porn and it's filling their head with so much insecurity. I can't say that. I'm worried about young men not going out and actually putting it in a vagina. Like when they ask me questions, you know what I say to them? Because of that. I say, cut down your content watching and actually focus on, on making your own fucking um, spank bank memories. I mean, get your dick out of your fucking hands and go put it inside somebody. So I always say harder. make sure there's consent. You come so much harder when you're just, I'm telling you, it takes time but, to get out of it. But I told you, like, I, I have my moments back. where I stop because I realize either I'm searching too much, I'm not satisfied, now I need a certain part, I have to keep looking at videos, I just get nastier it's and It's like nastier. going to Amazon for a black shirt, next thing you know, 10 fucking hours later, you got 40 so fucking hard. things in your cart. <laughs> you know, none of them are black shirts, okay? It's the same shit. Oh, but I was going to say Target. I'm pro, that gets you there too. I'm pro porn, but I just think this younger generation, you know, their parents, there's a real generation gap right now where parents don't realize that at 12 years old, their kids that are in the room for four hours a day are watching yeah. porn the entire four hours. <laughs> And which, I tell you all the time too I watch porn now on Twitter and I don't think even a lot of people Twitter I now, show every parent I know oh, how much porn their kid is watching on, on Twitter, Twitter. A lot. like Twitter got it like Twitter is literally above Pornhub in, in where in I category? consume and where I, mean, granted, I consume you porn. can filter it out but even you if it's fil- granted I follow everyone that, like, and there's so many things that don't I, pop so up like, I, I, you don't have to follow Twitter. anyone but it the thing now that gets retweeted on your timeline based on just the people you follow too it's it's really crazy I flew to a country I went to Turkey late November to, do, to shoot the first ever series of safe sex campaigns consent con- campaigns nice. condom Ooh. campaigns because they have no sexual education there That's at all amazing. and That's so you really know good. we don't have sexual education in every state in this United States as a matter of fact only 22 of our states offer sex education to our young people in school which well, is just get criminal in the state to not Florida. give them any information because the Bible Belt Bible Belt does not do sexual education. That's yeah, why. No, it's I'm not. not so that. back to the porn thing with young people, yeah. they're not realizing that A, and, I, and this is what I go through with them on my OnlyFans. It's really helping me find like, where's my niche when I decide I want to get into TikTok? And what could I be? I think <laughs> oh, I'm a good neutral person to kind of answer these questions and to kind of put some of these young men's mind at ease. A, we find the guys with big penises. It's like, you're not going to go and sign <laughs> a guy to the NBA that's four foot nine. You're going to find the guy that's six, seven, right? We find the guys Nine. with big penis, they stay really lean. So it gives them the, the appeal that it's like a dick on a stick. You know, the leaner the guy is, the bigger it looks. They stay shaved. We shoot them with a fisheye lens that makes it look longer. We light the penis. We light everything. So I'm trying to express this to these young men because I what I feel is they've watched so much. Like, I have virgins, 25, 26, 27 years old men virgins they're afraid to use that thing because they're so in their own head oh dang about everything that they've that watched you, you've heard this before too I this. so i had a friend who she was trying to get down with this one dude and he was a virgin and he didn't want to fuck but the reason why he didn't want to fuck is because he thought his dick was too small yep and the reason why he thought his dick was too small is because he kept comparing it to all the porn dick yep 
Oh wow! Yeah. What do you, whatever happened? Did did she? She still didn't fuck. He still nope. Who wants to fuck a ro- uh, a virgin like a rookie? Like I'm not, I'm not, it's no purpose for me. How old was she? I mean, like, then is there another guy age. coming well, over? I'm 26. He's yeah, around that's, my age. That's old to be a virgin as a guy. Yeah. Okay, it when we old. were young, that's I, old to be a virgin as a guy. No, I think it's you old. You make it past 18 I thought, now. I was about I think to say old that's old. Ever. I think, right. I think right? they, they, they start fucking in middle school, don't they? Fuck High yes. school? Yeah. Middle yeah. school? Yeah. At least the okay, handies. Okay, just tell them I mean, yourself. No, no, no. You're like, yeah. So I think it's it's kind of melting minds. And that's not, you know, our teen pregnancy is the lowest that it's ever been in the U.S. And also young people oh, are I fucking older. I saw that older. statistic, but I did think it was due it's, to COVID. It's, it's not COVID. Oh. It's young people are fucking less than ever. And young women that I speak with are more afraid of men than we ever were because yes. the guys that watch porn think that every girl wants to be choked and smacked. And like, if it's a girl's first 25 to 50 experiences, she ain't ready for all you that. Know you know what it I mean? attributes to maybe like we're, I don't know. I feel like, yes, I totally believe the thing with men, but I don't know if more around shame than it does around education. Because for one, I definitely had sex the first time, not because I wanted to, because it was like I had, you know, all your friends were doing it. Right. Didn't really feel like it was that much of an option. I think now there's a lot more, I don't know, confidence in the younger girls into saying no. We're more educated about uh, consent. I think that's why we're having less sex. I just And have- let's just also say a little bit, guys have become a little bit whiny, a little bit kind of needy, and women have become stronger. And I think women Ooh. still get turned on by a stronger yeah. man. And when they're not feeling that, sure. it's just like, oh, I'll go read. I'll go do something. I'll go learn something. Women are just more empowered now. They're not just feeling... I did the same as you. I had sex my first time because all my friends were already having it. But I went to fucking Planned Parenthood. I asked all the questions. I went back to the boyfriend. I said, we can't have sex for 90 days. It takes 90 days for the pill to kick in. I ain't fucking around. I Wait, don't want it takes no fucking 90, kid. 90 days for what pill to kick in? Birth control. Guess what to them fiancés? Wait, really? That's exactly yeah. why. <laughs> Wait, really? I any, didn't know any, that. Wait, is that still... Any, that just you know, back I then didn't know that anytime you're going to start taking something that you want to work all year long, you have to figure your body has to adapt to it. You need to go through a couple cycles where your body actually understands. Nah, Lisa, they told you that back then. There's no way. There's no way because bitch, as soon as I, as soon I got that depot, bitch. I, <laughs> well, it's a the shot, depo, right? The oh, depot's different. different. That's different. Oh, I'm talking about pills. Oh, okay. Depot's different. Depot does kind of work instantly, doesn't because it? For those of you who don't know what the depot is because you live on another planet. It's depot Depot shot. Um, I, I had the depo yet before, but it made me so fat. Yeah, I will never do the depo. Like I couldn't again. stop eating everything. It does, but I don't do birth control. I, I, yeah, I don't I, do birth I, control I either. I didn't. I just, up. I just will pay the five hundred. <laughs> Mandy, stop. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. That. I'm sorry. Okay, I won't say it anymore. I'm sorry. You don't. Do I'm pro choice. What do you want me to do? Oh, wait, aren't we all? Damn. But every time it, you're it's like, funny. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I mean, funny. <laughs> it's funny. What do you want me to do, Wendy? Do the rhythm method. For me. That to me, when any man says I pull out, I laugh like you're a fucking joke. That doesn't keep you from You literally lie the way he told the me I was crazy for Just so fire. you know the pre cum is more effective than that load See he pulled out. I mean? I'm just I'm telling you. For ten days. That shit can stay in you for ten days still trying to eat okay, it. Wait, your okay, egg. wait, who's giving you these? <laughs> Seven dates, to ten Lisa? days. Wait, wait, but one that's one why moment, for moment. ovulation you shouldn't be. I know all of it. I read this shit obsessively. Wait a second. It sperm can stay in you for ten days. I thought it was why they say look at ovulating for seven to ten days. Yeah. Really only swimming, swimming around in there, days. swimming around there, trying to get in. Do you ever feel it swim inside of you? I have. No, you lie. You know, okay. she, she felt, felt it in her eye. eye. That's what I was just gonna say. Wait, it was in my eye. Wait, you because lie. when you get cum in the eye, you visualize these little sperms that you saw in movies, like how they explain the sperm, <laughs> right. and you visualize it thinking that but your you, eye is an egg, right? Bro, it's you <laughs> it's and so head. and you know here's your, you're supposed to use milk, so you go into your you're renting a location. Wait, you put milk in your eye? The lact the lactic acid in the milk calms down the sperm and makes your eye so you can drive home from set because the fucking cum is like making your eye on fire and then you're picturing the, 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 the sperm and it is true the egg thing you do feel wait it. you feel it in your eye them swimming around well no that's the visual your head's tricking you when okay, you get real, it real, <laughs> wait, 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 it burns but I, I have burns like a motherfucker okay so real it? question you know when you squint them and you can get the light pollution you can see it that, that looks like sperm yeah. right now no bro see you're, you're, you're do it I'm you're telling buggy. you it's you just the little stars when you look up into a light bitch <laughs> the real question I want to know is um, is it 2% whole or almond well listen if what you're at a location milk? house and you got cum in the eye you're using anything they got in the fridge okay <laughs> anything they got in the fridge you want to calm that shit cream? down I'll so take milk it. not water <laughs> milk because the lactic acid yep and it's uh, it's unbelievable just put it in a cup you know slush on your eye I hopefully, feel like if anyone gave us on, this tip 
lashes oh, big enough that it held some of the load. Like you're like holding on, you're trying to pull the lashes off and get that that out. See, I like bukkake. It's like my favorite, which is hilarious <laughs> because whenever they get come in their eye, I'm like, oh, I feel so bad for you. And they don't move. They're such good girls. They just sit there and wait for more, right? They just, they know you see it, it's happening. You're like, but bless her heart. I've been doing She's bukkake completely. a lot, Weezy. You'd be so proud. Watching? Like, no. We're actually doing no, it. No, we do a thing like between our rounds now. He pulls out and he likes to come on my face. And then he goes back and puts it in. So he's fucking me while there's it's, nothing. Like, it doesn't come all over. That's just called. That's like. Wait, is, is that just a facial? Yeah, bukkake is like a like a round of men. Yeah, bukkake, uh, he goes round and listen, on my face. No, 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 no. And bukkake is like. I, I want to make the rules here. I want to say it's seven or more. It's a group. Okay. Okay. It's a group. Come, it's like well, a gang bang. Where do you? Well, right. do you if it's four or less, it's not a gang bang. It's group scene, right? You know, I last have week this argument. We said. Mandy said <laughs> she feels like her max could be three. Three would be my max. You well, can cater to three, but if one's down and having a weak moment, you don't have another one to step ooh. in. That's the beauty of multiple participants. But I have two more. Yeah, but yeah, but well, they're both busy. You either got your hands, your mouth, your ass, your vagina. Split. Okay, okay. So what? What was? What is your? Number? Have you done DP yet? I mean, with a toy. Okay, okay, that's a good start. What a toy. What a start. Well, so I was just saying. Room <laughs> for you. I was, Get off the bench. So I was just saying that. <laughs> if I wanted, okay, let me ask you. And and we'll get into black sex a little no, bit. You, this us. is a flow that I'm really yeah. enjoying. You like this? Oh, Girl, this is oh, easy. Don't, don't, Lisa, don't tell me that because I love Mandy and I, we have an outline for our First show. First off, I'm, we're still we, going to stick to it, bitch. We don't think always I got this, baby. argue about the outline because sometimes we flow, sometimes it's outline. I like a mix of both. Mandy is <laughs> Mandy is gripping oh, you, her phone. My phone is because she wants to get the next segment it's no out. can you skip but I no know. i don't <laughs> well, well no because i'm watching the whole thing and i just lisa don't don't laugh at me this is what we're not gonna do i like an outline Andy, let's skip the black I, sex quick, what's your sign i'm a libra okay so she's, it's a control but freak, also, guess what? i only say that because apparently i was born in october but i don't believe in science or the moons and stars <laughs> did you so, see the full moon last night by chance it was beautiful there's the full moons in libra yeah it didn't look like a scale to me. It oh still looked like a regular moon. <laughs> the shape didn't change. That's you the know, biggest, was, that's the biggest was, moon of our year. It was the full moon that pushed the uh, container truck that had been stuck in the canal Ever. for multiple days. Yeah. It, put, it was the full moon and the current from the water that was able to free that capsized. That's crazy. So that's, or that is they were just hitting it for so long trying to get it out. No, I saw the moon in Mexico beautiful. when it came out so yesterday. Beautiful. Oh, that was wild. So it's in the rundown. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, skip the black sex ones. Get well, back no, in the game. Because the black sex ones is going to get us into even more. All right, talk. go ahead. But wait, I wanted to finish the goddamn gangbang talk. Oh, did you? So, DP, <laughs> are you willing to do it with two participants? So, here's the thing I will do it with two participants. The thing is, I'm a size queen. And so, I feel like if I wanted to do a gangbang that I actually enjoyed, one of the dicks would have to be small. But Not I. Not true. I'm telling you how my orifices work. <laughs> Trust me, you can push the limits on those. I orifices. mean, I get it. I'm pushing with my man already, but I'm telling you, if he is in my vagina, the size that would have to go in my dick for me to be in. So we do it with my toys already now. So that's why I know kind of when it gets to a point where, okay, it hurts. It's not. Do you enjoyable. use a butt plug to open up before? Oh, you yeah, girl, I got toys? a little bedazzle one now, too. I'll be walking around like, ooh, baby, look. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be trying to show him my little jewels. Close Rivarski. No, it's not. I'm not that wealthy yet. I'm not having <laughs> yes. Swarovski in my goddamn Buddha hole. But um, I feel like that's the thing. And this is not to shame. It is. I mean, I guess we do it all the time. I don't really get wet to small looking dicks. They're not even that cute looking to me. So this to is a message to everyone out there that feels that their dick is not too small. We're not shaming you. We really want you to have a lot of miraculous sex. So we have a different gauge of small. Your small is just fine. Right. Go ahead and think my pussy looks. I don't care. It's really small. <laughs> My advice is this. Anal sex. Fucking go to school and become a plastic surgeon. <laughs> you will still get a hot fucking bitch even with that little dick if you do plastic surgery. That's true. Ooh, my sugar daddy had a small dick. Shows are plastic surgeons, right? That's husband, they are. I bet, oh, but oh, my oh. sugar daddy had a small dick and I was like, I really couldn't even feel, I didn't even it feel did it. Not I mean, I didn't feel it like so as bad. Them, bitch, so I didn't give a fuck if a I nigga, felt full. I didn't care if my, my niggas and sponsors was paying me. If they dick was little, I even said, oh, I don't suck dick. I couldn't do... 
<laughs> I just didn't want to do it. Like, ew. maybe the money wasn't enough for you. I even was like, it was from enough the back for me. only. From my the pussy back felt only. So full every time. Like, Niggas was fucking at my, my floor thighs. to ceiling windows and your closets and your and stuff. The private yeah, planes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Do you think I gave a fuck? So that's my advice to you all out there. If you're become penis, a plastic surgeon, it's in your hand with no Never. extra. Then just fucking study. Maybe hard. you need to learn crypto. Study hard. Just do it up. <laughs> do it up. Get them NFTs. Do it up. For the NFT. Do it up because you're not gonna be out there slinging that dick with no job and having some girl take it. Okay, so, small. Let, so maybe let me, that's why a lot of big dick dudes and a lot of good sex is or it's like broke dick because I always talk about how good broke dick is. It's the best. Yeah. And when I meet a guy that has a big dick that also has a job, I tell him like, I don't even know why you have a fucking job. <laughs> you, still, you still be getting fucked all the time. I know. I'm so giving you money. Probably when you have to pay bills. It's a fair point. But I mean, is. you really need to do nothing else. No. And you're also surprised when they're not assholes. Because you're like, you know, you can be a kind of an asshole with that dick. I'd still probably hang Big out. dick guys have been pretty kind, but I feel like it's because they know they can fuck whoever they want. Yeah. And they're always very patient with sex. Do you ever notice that? Yeah, Who because they've hurt girls in the past. Yes. And so they're very yeah, cautious of making are, sure they don't hurt girls. Which is why a lot of them also, too, a lot of the big dick niggas don't really stroke that well because they have put so many women in, in pain. Yeah. Which is, I'm, I'm going to let y'all know now, for the little dick niggas, a lot of my friends like little dicks because they don't like pain. I'm just a size pain queen, yes. I guess. I like pain. I like to feel like full and stretched a little. I like to feel like a baby could slide right out after you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, this this like the size you of a baby. Did. What is that TLC yeah. when they go out on the porch? They're like, I don't know how it came out. I just went outside and the <laughs> baby was right there. <laughs> I'm fucking, what it, fucking show is that? Yo, it's it was a, what is it called? Bitch, like, I'm pregnant, I ain't didn't know it. She said TLC. Yeah, pregnant, didn't know it. Oh, pregnant, didn't know it. Oh, I was thinking TLC, no scrub. Those producers get to make wild Let shows. Let me tell you something. I'm Lisa. falling down the rabbit hole in that Amish shit because I, the Amish Oh, sister wives. <laughs> No, oh, the, literally Irish, the, um, the Raising Irish. Was like, 90 day, oh, they Brick suggested Amish? that to me. Yes, 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 yes. Have you ever seen Amish people in the wild? I have. I grew up near them. I saw one in Mexico and I just wanted to be like, bitch, you could change Are you allowed clothes. to say that? Amish people in the wild? What does that mean? In think, like out of, their, their, so, uh, out of their cult. out of yeah. their out of their environment. Uh, uh, here we go. Their, yeah, out of their Not civilization. In the wild. We the wild. Yeah, yeah like for example, I was just going to ask Lisa, what do, how should people treat porn stars in the wild? Yeah, that's, Damn, a, that's a great question. Yeah, that's a question. part of the horrible decision. So let's go ahead and get there. I'm, it's a, it's a yeah. part of the outline. Outline. Okay. It's a part of the outline. <laughs> I'm going to answer this Jeopardy style. No. In case anyone wants to clip it. Well, actually, guys, for the horrible decision this week, real quick, too, because... Okay. Oh, y'all know I had it. Shout out Black Sexcellence, Sir John Julius. I also just wanted to give an honorable mention to King Noir and Glamazon Tayomi. Uh, we are going to get into leaving porn. So before I get out of here, I did want to say um, that these three people... Um, work on uh, something called hashtag black porn matters. Um, it is a studio that champions the idea that porn does not have to be degrading. Uh, the studio creates workspaces to educate talent and viewers on how to be better partners. Um, and King Noir and Glamazon Taomi uh, were a part of a panel with Sir Julius talking about just making the porn space safer, uh, specifically for black performers. So I did want to give a shout out to them. Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, because, I mean, we've had a lot of people come on here, even sex workers, and talk about just how it's degrading. I mean, we've talked about even how we don't like the race play um, in porn. I enjoy Blacked, even though we've talked about how that has even been viewed as not so great. I enjoy black though, but it's the cinematography for me. Okay, the cinematography is fantastic, but talk the missing me. link here is the fact that you're taking women who never wanted to do an interracial scene. You're offering oh. them a complete obnoxious amount of money and then you're telling them you can't do interracial scenes for anyone else. So let's talk about all the oh, levels where this a contract? Yeah, it's for like a contract just because they don't want your scene competing with others because they might not let you do it for another year. You know what the girls say? Good, because I didn't want to do interracial anyway. And nothing oh, makes wow. me matter than the whole fucking process because first and foremost, whoever you're attracted to in this world, you should engage with, okay? That, that and, and we shouldn't be discussing race, but since the business breaks it yeah, down it like does. that because we need a category to search on the fucking internet <laughs> and we need a shelf to put it in a fucking adult bookstore, we can't just blend it by stars or by people. Because of that, we have this penchant, this, this kind of tendency in the industry to go after girls 
that don't do certain things and ask them to do it, whether it's interracial, whether it's anal, whether it's gangbangs, whether, whereas I You've came- been asked But I think that's things. because everybody wants to be the first. <laughs> right, but I came into ah. the industry in the 90s when they said like, hey, don't do anything on camera that you haven't done on, on in your personal life. You know, it's great to explore yourself on sex, on set, but- do you really want this to be your memory of what I agree. Like, like I don't think you should do it all on camera. Yeah, and for, your for the first, first time. time. Right. And do you want to like feel that natural sensation of like, oh, I want you to stick it in my ass, like at home, you know? So when companies, at home. When at companies home. do something like that, where they're enticing a girl who doesn't want to do something, and then they're blowing her up as if she wants to do it. And then uh. she gets the reprieve of not having any other companies ask her to do it for the next 11 and a half months because Black put her on her contract. That's then she gets to walk off with all this fucking money for a scene that she didn't want to do to be propped up in a way she doesn't want to be. And I think it makes the male performer look like a fool. I think the the male performers that are working with these girls have to work with girls that they know didn't Don't really choose to work ah. with Why them. wouldn't stars want to do interracial scenes? So there's multiple reasons. Um, one of the, a lot of the reasons, okay, one, uh, if a girl is dating a black man, he normally doesn't want her to be with other black men, but she can be with other men in the industry as long as they're not black. So there's that oh. one rule. That's a secret rule. Then there's the family rule. Then there's some fam some girls that are like, you know, Forget this, that I'm this, doing porn. Bro, the, uh, you know, better not be black. And I agree with you on this. Listen, I remember where girls would say to me, oh, I'm only going to do lesbian. I'm like, doesn't matter. You're still doing fucking porn. Like, you're still doing, oh, but my dad will be out if I do interracial. And I'm like, mm, but you did a gangbang in a trailer. Like this, you know, I, I feel the same way as you. So there's that. And then there's the girls that are just afraid. And they're afraid of size. And so they've been in a safe oh. place with, White men Sorry. that aren't, you know, listen. They're scared of them anacondas. They are. They look at a guy like Bandingo and they don't see it the way I do. I look at a guy like Bandingo and I'm like, let oh, me just here. fucking clap first. But see, everyone I mean, stop. Moment of fucking silence. Lisa, tell us. Make the guy a fucking sandwich. Is it really Somebody true? wash his car. Are black guys really that much bigger? Because to me, yes, bitch. I have I not seen that. I have fucked really big dick white dudes. Really, the biggest dick I've ever seen was a Venezuelan guy. But I think the Congo and then Venezuela may have been second on our list of yeah, like countries we ran down once. But like generally, black men have had bigger dicks. But I think that the but black I've seen men, some smaller black men dick too. Me too. So you know, and I oh think, yeah, me too. I think too. that also height Poor attributes. Them. I, don't I, know I what like height does guys, attribute. So I think that's why I'm seeing bigger dicks, so even with white guys. But I haven't had like crazy tiny dick white guys like the sugar daddy. But I mean, okay. Uh, I yeah, have what do you it think? myself, but I get the photos sent to me by direct message all do the time. Do you think so that black men are really that much bigger? I think that there is a definite advantage. But when girth. you go into other countries like Europe, you get more girth. You get thicker white men, right? You get, and then also with the size advantage of not being circumcised. Remember, we circumcised men. We also take some size away from them, some potential growth. Right. So you might get oh. an extra nice inch that that because gets of to the grow skin. Up. Yes. That's why uncircumcised things are a fat and meaty. Yes. I wouldn't nice know. Nice girth, nice size, a little excitement watching it build up as well. I, I find love that. that. It's like a chia pet. You know what I mean? You get to watch <laughs> that, that start to grow. Like, it's like a little show, though. It is. It makes you feel so accomplished. I love uncircumcised things just it. because it's like, I feel like they're fatter. I think I've said that. Yeah, they are fatter. Yeah. So there okay. is a balance of both. <laughs> there is a balance of both. But I will say this. I don't get as many dick pics sent to me by brothers. And I don't know why. I guess it's because you have pride and you're using that dick and I respect you for it. I get a lot of white dick. And I get a lot of small white dick. And I get a lot of white dick where I'm like, dude, if you fucking shaved, you'd look at least an inch bigger. Or I'm not rating them yet. But my best friend wants us to have a stoner night over vacation where me and all my girlfriends sit down together and, and rate some of these dicks. That's yes. meat mail. That'll be so much fun. That's <laughs> fun. They just, because they want us I, to get the I get so many unsolicited and get party, Lisa. Do it we're, we're going to do a little party. Um, but also we like to critique. I like to critique like you're fucking, your mirror's disgusting. You didn't fold your laundry. Your bed's That's what, that's what be nasty <laughs> said she does. I do that shit. Like I am a forensic. I'm looking at that photo forensically. Like, but- I do think that there is a more well endowed from different cultures other than Americans. So white Americans. Okay? Yeah. When you go into Europe. I haven't had a lot of those. Yeah. But so. I also feel like a lot of white American guys in my head or e even in theirs, I'm not prepared to have certain conversations. I need someone who's seen a little more of life. And maybe it's because I lived in Florida, but like the white guys there were not it. When I moved to New York, then I was fucking white Duh, guy. girl, that's Confederate like, flags. It's like, a red state oh, down now. because like, <laughs> You saw some other shit. You were yeah. different. Now, 
Trump made me go back to black fully. But not gonna lie, when they open those borders and I'm back on my little ultra Croatia shit, maybe, you know, a little Molly, I mean, be like, yeah, you don't speak English. Fantastic. Fantastic. You so annoying. No, anyway, so we are gonna get um, into, because you did give a lot of, uh, we kind of already got sex tips, so we're gonna skip the hors d'oeuvre and we are going to get into, oh shit, I did want to do the kink of the week. Okay, never mind. Damn, we're all over the place. Shit. Because I did want to talk about real Let's quick. Let's go back to gangbang then. Well, one more thing with porn. Outside of gangbang, I wanted to talk about celebrity parody porn. Okay. And before we start that, because I didn't want to, for those of you who may still be like, I know her from somewhere and I can't figure it out. Before we get there, I wanted to say, what film or TV character do you envision having sex with and that you would click to watch a celebrity parody porn with? Ooh. Because I got mine. I think mine would have to be Bleak Lively and... You can't... I don't know. Really? People. Who is Yes, that? you do. Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl. And the Deadpool violence, guy, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Who is it? They're Bleak couple. Lively. You didn't watch Gossip Girl? Who is it? Um, Are you serious? Let me see. Is this one Serena? Of you don't know who Serena? I mean, like, you, you don't Serena know about Serena Williams? and Blair? I've watched every episode of Gossip Girl. Pie, <laughs> Wait, hold on, bro. So, you really didn't watch? Do you watch Charmed? Charmed is not Gossip Girl. But it's still... Oh, are you talking about Leo? What? No. And Charmed? Oh, can, can I That's get one without Blake a Blake Lively. That's Blake oh, Lively. Oh, Blake Lively's a woman. Yes. yes. Oh. Were you thinking too hard? <laughs> Sure, Blake. That's why I was like, Gossip Girl. What, of course, what you man said was parody. Girl? I thought about Sarah Palin right away because of me yes. playing Palin. And then yes. I got to play Tina Fey playing Palin for a 30 Tina Rock Palin. parody. Yes, that's that's so it all kind of came really full circle. Yes, that's why I, I, we was going to get into Tina it. Fey. I'm going to tell y'all right now who I would want. Mm. And I need him with his scales and fin. I need Aqu Aquaman. Jason Momoa. Yeah. I need Aquaman. That was my threesome I was couple. Her. I am willing uh, to ruin my pH for that watery. Did you not watch Game of Thrones? Dick. No, I didn't watch. Oh. I am not so a god. In Game of Thrones, he had a didn't race. Didn't he scene, die first season? And I, I felt like, so I guilty because I was like, this is not him in real life. You are still going to front try to fuck this man one day. And I feel like him and Lisa together, it's kind of sick because Zoe Kravitz I is technically his stepdaughter. Anyway, we not going to talk about both. God. This is the man I want right here, all up in my pussy, fucking up my pH. I will take all of that and goddamn I love mermaid. I the commercial dick. he did during football season uh, where he walked into his house and took off his arms yeah. and he was like a normal dude. Like he pulled that. off like all the muscle. He was a he was normal like dude. Ronnie looking guy underneath it. Was I'll crazy. still fuck him. <laughs> oh, wait. I ain't going to hold you. I never mind. Wait, not bald. Wait, whoa. Oh, there it is. He's going to pull off his arms. Yeah. Because now I'm gonna keep. Let, let's keep the hair and the beard. Keep the <laughs> hair, the beard, the muscles. I need all of that. Mine's Obama know. with a bunch of staff. Oh, okay. Oh, that would be nice. See, Michelle in my head is too regal, and I actually feel like she's too motherly for me to enjoy. Like, I understand that. But like Obama, I could take separate. You know what I'm saying? So if Obama was fucking all the staff, I could do that. So who, would you just be watching like a cuckold situation or would you be engaging in this? I want to know. Oh, and we were talking about porn parodies. Yeah. Do I want to oh. fuck Obama? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, who came up with you doing the Sarah Palin That parody? was Larry Flint. That was Larry Flint. And okay. because it was a Hustler production and he's always been incredibly but brilliant. You know, we just lost Larry Flint a little over a month ago. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Uh, he was an amazing part of my career and I was thrilled to do that project with his company because uh, I knew I'd get to travel with Hustler and do a bunch of events and yeah, we ended legendary. up shooting six of those, uh, but it was the first one that was absolutely epic and it was a great experience. Did she send ever like a cease and desist or anything? She didn't, but he and I did go to D.C. and we did speak in front of the government where he uh, clarified the, the use of misspelling someone's name to make it legally a parody where he could profit off of it. And, you know, if you realize after that Palin movie, there were parodies done on every single yeah. movie. And that was Larry Flint speaking in front of Congress to, again, you know, pave the road for everybody to continue to grow, just like he did for us many, many years ago. If you've seen The People versus Larry Flint, if you haven't, you should watch it. He is all about our history and, and how watch it. the sex I business I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know that If it wasn't for him, I would have never had this career legally. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, learn about him. He's Wait, legal. legally? What do you mean? Well, there, were, there was a period of time where, you know, Shooting porn movies wasn't legal and you couldn't get paid for it. Larry but, Flint is the reason that porn is legal? But he fought for our First Amendment right. He oh, fought for the wow. magazines. And he fought for the evolution of what then became with the internet kind of anything. Damn, well, what have to? People always looked at Larry have Flint as like, that. well, Hustler is like the, they're like, oh, Playboy, but not Hustler. But Hustler was real porn. I know. Hustler was the right. real porn. 
the best comics, the best stories, the best. He oh, always wow. fucked with politicians. So when <laughs> he brought this idea and he had Drew from his office reach out to me about this idea, I loved it because of the battle that Larry Flint already went through with our government, which you're going to see in the movie and understand why he had to roll around in a 14 karat gold wheelchair. We could do a cinema on that. We I would have love a to do that. portion of our show where we basically will take uh, on our Patreon a movie or series or something in media and watch it and review it. That's a good one. I, do I definitely want to do that. And um, so we are going to get out of porn now. Okay. Because, but you are out of porn yeah. now. Yeah, uh, here we are. We're back on the street. Uh, got out. <laughs> yes. Ooh, I, do in I want to buy wild. that big bag on Canal Street? Oh, uh, no. Listen. Fuck no. Get away from they me. They are so there. outside of They are hu- they hustling. Don't, listen, don't come up to me. I, you think Forever 21 just walks across the street to us? No, we walk into Forever 21. Like, no, they're coming up to you. They come up to people's cars. Tell them, yeah. let me want it. Lisa. Had you stood over there looking cash? Well, no. Maybe? They don't, they don't care. They don't. When she, we I were got moving, Uber and she was in my face. I thought studio. she wanted the Uber. I go, it's not a cab. It's an Uber. You gotta use the app. She That's goes, what I was going to say. Like, they come up to the car. When we were moving wait, in, I was holding one of the boxes with the cameras, with boxes in my hand. She still was like, "Do you want a bag, bitch?" My hands are full. <laughs> no, I want a bag. I want someone to hold this. Like, I what? almost had to hockey chuck her. A little Dude, they bit go up to cars, but people pull up. Like, no, I was just downstairs picking up weed from Wax. Shout out to Wax and who's Wax? Yeah. Well, I wasn't picking up weed. I was picking up the lemonade. But I, I went to go By pick way, it up weed downstairs. weed is soon to be legal in New York It is. So, I mean, no, I know about y'all right. This episode come out. Not it really fully is. fucking. We're not. Wait, well, I learned that. From filming, cannabis is the word. Oh, well, I went down to get some cannabis. And they asked, she asked if I want watches. She asked if I want Rollies. Do you think I want Rollies from you? No. She was like, no watch, no watch. And I, I'm not finna do the accent because then it's really bad. But she was asking me if I want watches. Like, girl, I'm picking up my cannabis. No, I don't want no watch from you, sis. And that's what I said. I said, no, I don't Next want no time she you. comes up to you for the watches, ask her if she knows what time it is. <laughs> and then when she answers you, say, it ain't time for me to buy a watch right now. You Whoa. Whoa. Let the ball right. Jokes that's a From porn to comedy that's central. Go back and forth with them a little bit because it really throws them. They're like, Are you, so you're not buying a watch? Like, <laughs> no, I'm going to just ask, is it free? Because they Wait, don't like to hear So free. let's go back to the street. In the wild, you're done now. When people come up to you or when people are approaching you, because I've always been very curious t- to this question, when meeting porn stars in person, what should someone say? How should they act? And is oh, is there an interaction that's disrespectful for you or something to say? Oh, yes. Uh, it's a great question. Really, when you're meeting anybody that you know that doesn't know you, especially when it's a female that doesn't know you, you have to understand there's this little alert that goes up to us. When you approach quick, quickly, we're like, what the fees up? Okay, why are you coming at me like this? Mm-hmm. So you also have to think that just because it's your moment and you're like, oh my God, there's Lisa Ann, I have to get a photo. Maybe Lisa Ann is doing something that in her mind didn't include taking a photo with you because if you do one for this person, then he posts it. The next thing you know, there's a million people and they post it. Masks in the pandemic have been the greatest thing that ever oh, happened sure. to me. I'm sure. I, you're going to be mask shaming me for so long because I'm going to stick with the mask because I've been going into restaurants where people never met me before the mask, didn't know me now. And I chat up people that work there for 20, 30 minutes. And I know it's going to end once they figure out who they are, who I am, because then they're going to be creepy and then they're going to ruin it. And then I'm not going to want to go there anymore because people take your niceness for weakness and then think, will you call my friend on FaceTime? Oh, will you take this picture? So I just won't go. Before the pandemic, I didn't go in anywhere and talk to anybody. I'm pretty much a shut in. I get everything delivered. Um, if I do go out, I go out with security. Now you feel like group. you can go out? You go out with oh, security? Oh, God. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a masturbation factor that's very confusing. And normally, let's say guys approach me, he's eight feet away. I can tell by the look in his eye how he knows me. Obviously, it's not from listening to me covering fantasy sports radio. <laughs> he's getting excited. I can tell as he gets to four feet in front of me how many hours he's potentially watch and as he's starting to sweat and kind of elevate and now he can barely speak and it's a completely awkward moment and he just wants to put his arm around me and like do this selfie and sometimes it'll happen where they don't ask they'll just come up when you're not looking oh and they'll grab you and touch you and do the photo no i'm not gonna lie that's only happening in clubs but we also well we feel that sometimes when we've done clubs but also even in our meet and greets in the beginning we they they were just touching us 
And it got to where Weezy and I had to be like, just ask consent, please. Like, Remember the girl who touched my face? Like, <gasps> with yeah. her hands? Like, with you out. are so... Yeah, literally oh grabbed her my like God, this With her knot. hands, like you don't know when she washed them. And mouth. this was pre-COVID. Oh, pre-COVID. And you're pre about your skin, because we always are worried about our skin. Thank you. Even the guys I'm fucking don't touch my face unless we're close. Yeah. And we've had the conversation. I was so in shock. Yeah. And oh. I also didn't know what to do because I don't want to be We close. never want to be mean either. either. That's another I'm like, well, thing. I'm just saying it's not a fucking petting zoo, yo. Right. Okay, it's yeah, not that's a, right. Okay, so wait, people are coming up to you taking fo- like I'm sure in restaurants we've heard that, or they for- take spy photos of me and post them. Although I that I, I see that even I'm, when I'm on so the I train, see that the subway, I'd be like, it. shit, bitch. Yes, I'm on the train with your ass, and they be like this. Like it's so obvious that that's you. So are- I don't know what it is about that, but that makes me furious. Oh, it pisses me off. That is a trigger. I. I hate it. I've broken quite a few phones. I, I I broke, I took a wait to a guy's phone at Equinox a couple of years ago. What? In Hills. The manager had to call me and ask me if I did it. I said, I'm, I can't be sure. But I knew, <laughs> the, the, what the guys don't realize is when they're, they're blowing up your spot, then I get out to my car and I'm scared because there's people waiting in the parking lot that want something from me. Oh, you uh, want to hang out? Oh, you want a photo? Oh, you want, and then you're worried, okay, now I can't go right home. Now I got to drive to Target. I got to sit in the parking lot for 20 minutes there because you can't have somebody following you back home. Right. So you go through all of this um hence why living in an apartment in new york city works for me because i no longer have to worry about a car going anywhere and right. i have security 24 so hours So you feel safer in new york than la yeah yeah you know it's funny because people always ask me i live in the lower east side and they're always like oh it's too many people da, 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 da. there's something about the people around me that make me feel safer than not like living in busy. I don't mind if like and if I'm not somebody that comes at me and I'm scared here, I'll stab them. It's the city. You don't hear as many people <laughs> getting stabbed in LA. You know what I mean? Mm. It's just going to be another stabbing in the news. You know what I mean? And yeah. of course, it's, it's not a big deal. You can do that shit in the city. It's the city. Well, damn. So All what's right, we're the not going to stabbing in the city. <laughs> also, like, <laughs> can they tell you? to just be cool. You know, just approach somebody and also be mindful. If that person's engaged with their friends and having a conversation, just don't ruin their moment. You know. Yeah. Never touch somebody. So if I'm trying not to make eye contact with you and you realize that and you just can't seem to go about your day, the worst absolute thing you can do is touch somebody. You're just touching me because now that's intrusive. Yeah. So it's tough because my rule of thumb is this. If I'm at an event where I'm doing photos, which I still make sure I do events, club hosting, this and that, that's where you come and get a photo because when I get in there, it's fucking game on. That's true. Right. I'm I ready. Agree. I'm dressed. I, I'm gonna. You, I got a great dress on. It's good. Every photo is gonna be lit. Great. We're gonna do these photos. But when I'm out and about, I just don't really want the burden of knowing that, like, okay, yes, this is your time to run your errands. But if 60 people need something from you, you've got to add that five minutes a person. You got to be prepared to be out for an extra two to three hours. And also, people freak you out. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I, I wanted to. It adds I, up. It adds up. Outside of social and just being outside in the wild, I want to talk about life after porn as it pertains to work and dating. I'll do dating first because I want to end off with all of the things that you're doing work-wise now, uh, especially because, what, maybe a month ago we had a, a, a guest on. Shout out to Troy. One of our home mails was like, well, what do hoes do when they done hoeing? What do strippers do? What do sex workers do after they're done doing that? And of course, our guest at the time was like, well, it never has to end. You did leave the industry. So I want to ask you now with dating, you were also married at one point. I was. So we're still friends. We talk every year what on our wedding like anniversary. Um, great. You know, dating now, I had someone in my life for a good 10 year span, like as my number one. And then I had a, like a nice bench of casual contestants. Come on. And nice my rule, come on, all star team. My rule of thumb is just nobody married, nobody in a relationship. I'm not about that karma. Oh, I don't want to do Oops. anything. You know, I don't want to do any. So it'll just keep it light. And yes. my guys will be honest with me like, yo, I'm seeing somebody right now, but we'll still text. We'll still keep it. And that's the way it should be. Um, but then when I came here and all this happened, I was like, I just really want a fresh start in life. And I want to go out and meet people as I am now and see how it unfolds. I just have a vision of someone a little bit older than me that's also active and loves to do things like I do, whether it's skydiving, skiing, whatever it may be. I want somebody that's a bit adventurous. But dating is actually pretty fun because the people that have the kind of balls that I need to be able to hang have this Literally. whole 
have a level of intrigue with me where they find me interesting. And I find the person, the people that I'm attracted to the most are not the people that treat me like a science project interesting, but just treat me like I've accomplished a lot interesting. Like, oh my mm. God, you've traveled the world. You've done your own thing. That does feel you know, good. You know, and it does feel, so that's where I'm at now. It's like, that feels really good. It's, it's empowering. And, and there's a lot of guys out there like that. Now that I'm getting older, I feel dating was a lot harder when, when I was younger. At, oh, when you were younger. Yes. Maybe because you're so sure of yourself now. Do you think that? I, I'm sure of myself. The world has opened up a lot. Look, That's at, true. You know, we've seen more. Can you imagine being more people doing that, porn in the 90s? 20 years in the 90s. Ago, it was not easy. Oh, yeah. Do you know that when I would strip, there were banks that wouldn't take my money? Oh. oh. So I had banks in Quakertown and in different areas in Pennsylvania where I live, which was was one of the push to move to California because it was more open-minded state. But they were like, we're not taking your stripper money. And I would just have bags and bags. I bought a car, $3,500. It was a, a, a used Ford Bronco to go on the road. I bought it with ones. And I had to tell Shut the guy, up. like, I'm sorry, but the ladies at the bank here will not take this money. They're like, well, we've never taken one. I'm like, well, maybe you'll better like, like, let me just do this. I want to buy this car. It's money. This is I love money so, we so much. I don't care how you get it I don't me. care if it was in pennies. Y'all saw the article where the- uh, Oh, that motherfucker oiled up those pennies that? too. No. Did you see that? It was someone, uh, what, in unemployment? A guy <laughs> was waiting on his last paycheck and his on boss his was really abusive, just a just toxic masculinity was what he had said. And so he kept harassing him for his last paycheck. Boss dropped off pennies. Pennies for his last- Liquid in oil, so you can't even pick them up of the 900 some dollars. You know what I would have done with those fucking pennies? Took them to the bank. I would, I would have fucking picked that shit up, gone oh, to that mother's fucking <laughs> house and put them in little concrete bricks instead of oil and just one at a time, 900 of them through but his window. He needed that 900 yeah, bucks, he but that's worth his being last said. check. But so I think the world that's has so opened sick. up. I think people have become more open-minded and I can really tell dating when I'm meeting somebody, I can tell if they just want this sexual experience or if they want the human experience with me. And so now that I'm able to see that and define it, I definitely go with the human experience because when you connect with somebody, you're going to have great sex. Yeah. But I if agree. somebody's just having sex with me to tell people they had sex with me, like that's just out. I think and it's what we've out. learned too. Like I would have thought porn stars were so dirty and crazy if not for like Learning on your own, or I I'll also think this we're is more selective up. because of what we've been exposed to. Think about how sure. many porn stars are cleaner, or more yep. aware of uh, STIs. But really, my first interaction with a porn star was Marie Love, and I was like, "Oh my god, she's so normal." I was so eighteen, normal. yeah, right. And it's stupid to say. Where were you uh, in Florida? She was hosting a strip club. Yeah, and Which I remember city? like Orlando. Orlando, oh, so shout yeah. out Fold yeah, Seven. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, she's so normal. Yeah. This is so weird. Like she wants health because she's traveling all the time. Like, why am I thinking yeah. this person's gonna so be? So what do hoes do when they're done hoeing? <laughs> If they hoed right, oh, they get to enjoy the rest of their life because of the money that they saved, and then they get to do things that interest them. Whether it's like me working for Sirius XM and covering fantasy sports radio, I do influencer work for Bavada, which lets me get into every fucking sport from UFC to coming up the Kentucky Derby May first, yes. the U.S. Open April 9th through eleventh. Like it, it allows me to do things I really want to be doing and no longer be in search of the money. I Isn't can't believe that you're doing like, it in a... You're, oh, go ahead. She's just trying to be wifey and it's bothering me. I don't like real housewives. I love sports. I'm plant-based. <laughs> right? I'm healthy. Right? Fuck I'm you! Healthy. So should I be watching these shows? I love a no. gangbang. I can take a big dick in my ass. Do like, they and have I love sports. I'm my TV. Do they like, have gangbangs on desperate on the housewife shows? No. no. Oh, do they have good sex? We don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> That's they, they're too missing. angry. We don't know. That's what it's well, missing. No, it's not what it's missing because now the last five episodes of Atlanta has been about Bolo, which was a stripper that apparently fucked some of the girls there during a bachelor party. That's a whole nother topic, though. So now sex is literally taken up like five episodes of this season and I'm not interested anymore. Oh, wow. Because he was I, wearing I, a bootleg Chanel outfit anyway. Oh. It was just not cute. I don't oh, like male oh, shirt outfits. Yeah, it was bad. just really bad. <laughs> it was really like bad. So you do... I, the last question I want to ask you about what you've done now is how do you get around being in a male dominated industry such as sports with the past that you have, knowing that most of probably your colleagues, the people you work with, your bosses, people in these networks know you from that? How do you get them to see you past that? Because you're so good at talking to these sports and you actually know your shit too. I do. I love it. You know, it's really about what I, how I present myself to everybody. And I tell this to all the young girls and young men in the business. It's going to be how you present yourself. So there's a time and a place for everything. There's no shame in the scenes that I've done. There's no shame in the life that I've lived. But 
when I'm sitting here talking to you about a light up in fantasy football, of course, that conversation isn't appropriate in this conversation. And mm -hmm. the great thing with being with a company like Sirius and for working with Bavada is these are corporations that are very guarded and they're and they're really have an inclusive mindset and they want to be sure that nothing is weird. You know, we went away from hugging before COVID a year before COVID the company said, you know, we just realized that sometimes women, you hug a coworker that you like a male coworker, but then like that third guy comes over and you don't really want to hug him, but you hugged everybody else. So we're going to get away from hugging in the workplace just to protect the women that work here from not having to be nice and not say no to this hug. And so from now wow. on, we do share. Oh, yeah. wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a relationship with a company that's this forward thinking. So of course, when the the other hosts were introduced to me and the producers, they were introduced to me as this is how you treat this girl. And this is how she's going to work in this environment. And my first contract, I didn't know I'd be working for Sirius for this long. I started in 2013. But when I got oh, my wow. first contract, my best friend said, you better be too good for them to fire you. Or you were just a flash in the pan for social media. For because anything, I think right? at first it's like the shock factor sure. of Lisa Ann sure. doing sports. Absolutely. Like, right. So Absolutely. I just decided, well, I'd, my only goal no. now is be too good that I can't get fired. I know that's right. You said you're not in the industry anymore, but you do have OnlyFans. Yeah. Do you not feel like that's encompassed within the porn industry still? So it is, but at the same time, I feel so much value in the fact that like I shot a lot for my site, like a lot of solo masturbation, a lot of it's solo just photo sets, and then a lot of sex scenes. But those scenes never got out in distribution. They never got out on DVD. They never got put on Pornhub because they weren't that style of content. They were more like almost like an OnlyFans style. So I feel like I worked so hard. If you're a fan of mine or if you're a new fan of mine, you want to really see the library of my history all the way to the 90s, I was able to go back to photographers that I shot with in the 90s. We made deals on me buying back some of my photo sets. And so I have wow. my whole gen all watching me change. So in a sense, I feel like it's a way that the business is paying me back yeah. even more now wow. than when I was in it. Reminds you of being organized and keeping tabs on your shit. I'm able to profit off of things that I already did. And also for the two hours a day I, le I lose walking around and taking photos with people, I should be still profiting off that shit. Yeah, you should. I mean, yeah. I totally understand like needing to still do events, things like that. And I think the other thing is maybe no one's owned their, well, we have, we don't know. We, we're, we're still watching certain porn stars grow, but I'm hoping that they really do own their past so that mm. they can still profit off of it. Because how many women would we know after 40, and this isn't to put down your age, I'm just saying that I feel like in our heads, we think after that age, you can't do shit like this anymore. So for me to see my favorite porn stars, which, you know, a skin diamond or say the Cherry Hilson girl, like yeah. at that age, still owning it and doing it and being happy and smiling about their work, I think it's great. I and agree. not looking at it like, oh. And you have to right. remember girls that are doing it at that age are doing it completely by choice. They've already seen everything. So they're there by complete will. Mm -hmm. And also it's enabling them the actual life that they want to live offset. You, you notice how many of the girls get to travel and do really cool yeah. things. And let's face it, when you're at a, a regular job, you get minimal amount of days off. You're visiting family. Mm -hmm. You have minimum amount of extra income. We, I mean, I can remember leaving the business with a couple hundred, maybe like 600,000 airline miles. Um, and I took myself to Paris I mean, I for a I week. I with my 200. You, know, like, you, know, mm. you just don't realize how many things we're collecting and things that we're doing to build up our free time that nobody really sees or knows what we do. Mm. So there's that. That's amazing. I love it. Well, y'all know we got to skip home mail because we didn't kept Lisa way longer than we thought. <laughs> don't look at me like that. <laughs> Damn! Did we stay on the rundown? No, we, we didn't. Yeah, we did stay on <laughs> the rundown. We called it the rundown because that's what we call it in radio terms. Uh, What's the rundown? Are you on the rundown? Uh, like, no, no, no. We, we was a little skew on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what's our what's our minute mark? I know we're over, we're over an hour, right? Oh yeah, we're over. It. Oh Jesus! Oh uh, uh, y'all ain't getting longer episodes, so we out of here. At least the other people. To, yeah, you we gotta do a part back. two because I got a whole shit we ain't get to talk about. You can uh, find everything about me at the Real Lisa and Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Your book. My book, yes, the, the life. book, the life. I, see, I want get it at it was the life Lisa it was an and dot com. By the way, second book is almost done. I just got my first hey, round of congrats. editing. It's back. I also recorded my audio book for my first book, The Life, during the pandemic in oh, my bedroom closet. That's what closet. I listened to. Fucking oh. hung up that phone shit from Amazon and just oh, yeah. locked myself between my clothes for a month, recorded that shit. Ooh, uh, 12 so hours, by the way, if y'all didn't know, I literally just, <laughs> I got the audio book because I was like, I don't have time to sit 
and I, the way I listen to podcasts now, I was like, You'll let me start doing it. audiobooks because when I clean my house, when I do everything, yeah, yeah. I listen to, and you move around. Yep. And that's what Same. I can do. And I was like, because I told you I was going to buy it. I said, no, don't bring me one. I'm going to buy it. But I uh, went through the audiobook and I was like, yeah, so it's 12 hours. If you don't mind, it's that's how long it is. Um, and I'm loving it. I'm getting through it. Wasn't able to finish before this episode, but I absolutely am finishing it up. And that is the life. What is, are you able to say what the second one is? I will not say. Okay. But the second one not is coming yet. out. When she comes back, we'll talk when about it. When she comes back, yeah, we'll yeah. talk about we'll it. We'll have a book club. Yeah. Uh, book I'll club. give you some books to put in your boxes. Oh, your yes, bitch, in the box. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'll um, answer some questions for your people for the boxes too, if you I want. love it. Oh, now with the <laughs> shimmy. Guys, make sure you guys follow Lisa Ann. And if you haven't, can I tell them to go? Do you get money off Pornhub or any of the other? Oh, Just hell no, fans. we don't get no money off okay. Pornhub. So only, only fans. fans. At the really so if you guys want to see some really good content, Feel free to baby. send your dick pics to my direct message. My what? best friends would Are like to rate them with me. This is you asking for the dick pic. You no, gonna get them? I em. get five thousand a day. <laughs> Damn. A day. Okay, five thousand a day. A day. It's like the trenches in there. <laughs> And somebody sends me a dog pic and I'm afraid to open it. And it's like, why do you open the picture of my dog? I'm like, I just. It starts with a D. I don't know. That's one, <laughs> one good thing. Only fans, it shows as a blurred vision unless you want to open it and click on it. So good. you're not just it. getting penis in the aisle. I'm not. I'm done. I don't even tap in my DMs no more. Um, anyways, guys, make sure that you follow everything Lisa and support her. Uh, listener, she does sports like I used to do. Um, I mean, I used to do sports players too, but not no more. Anyway, uh, <laughs> make sure that you guys follow us on Patreon if you want some more content. Uh, maybe we can have you on one of our bonus episodes too. Let's we do, do that it. remotely, and I know that you're really good with remote recording yeah, now. Yeah, so yeah. That'd be fun. Uh, maybe we'll bring you on a Patreon episode. Guys, we have over we can call it Mandy's episodes. outline featuring Lisa and. <laughs> Th that's hashtag, what we're gonna do. Hashtag. I'm telling you, be like, hashtag we're gonna the get your point. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we're gonna leave you guys with a five minute bonus clip. Go ahead and join us over on Patreon. Over a hundred episodes waiting for you, and we drop another three to four a month. I I don't know. I guess we're doing the four now. Plus BTS, we got new tiers that are added now. So that's patreoncom backslash horrible decisions. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Horrible Decisions, and thank you, Lisa, and for joining us. Mm -hmm. This has been yet another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, this was like December, like right before Christmas. And this dude that I have been seeing for like over a year, we finally linked up again after like a couple months. And it was just not good. He had whiskey dick. He had cocaine dick. It was just horrible. So he was driving me home and I texted my other mans. I was like, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Oh, you know, it just happened. Wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> There's my story. Wait, so his dick just wasn't getting up. So you just mm -mm. made plans with another dick that you knew was going to get up. Mm -hmm. You know what's crazy? I never really shared this, but one of the niggas that I pegged, we never fucked because he had coke dick. And I was so off because I don't, you know, most my niggas don't be doing coke. They just do fucking like 10 blunts in a row. Coke dick, I'm telling y'all now, does not get up. Coke dick is like a little flaccid little baby thing that just stay there. So like it's I impossible. Pe I pegged this nigga uh -huh. all night long and then pegged him in the morning and his dick just didn't get up because of the coke. Do you have a different I, experience? That's Weezy? true. You know, like I've only done like I've only had sex with black men that have done coke with me. Like, but um, them niggas are hard. Well, he like he he's an expert in doing that. So he definitely did a lot, not like a, one or two lines. Like, yeah, nah, this nigga he was doing it all night. This nigga see, definitely. When I be on my party party shit, like when I'm on my seven a.m. shit, like niggas be doing coke at the spot. So, I, I yeah, he was like dumb hard. Now maybe because it was his first time, and then like yeah, yeah, I don't know. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. The nigga that I like. And I think he was nervous because this was his first time being pegged and we had talked it out for so long. And he knew I was coming with the big body, bitch. So when I pegged him, not the big body. Maybe he did extra lines of coke because that I didn't get fucked that night or the morning. Like, cause see, that, a lot of people say that coke makes you crazy horny. So a lot of niggas could fuck for hours. I mean, his Buddha hole was opening up, bitch. I ain't gonna hold you. That so he ass, was ready for that that yeah it, there have been times when it's like uh sorry to keep cutting you off no go um ahead. when that's what it'll we do be here, like, he would just be doing it <laughs> they'll be doing it all 
all night and he's just like, I can't even come. But then sometimes he just can't get it up at all. Like you can't even get to that point. So that's what it was that time. So like Molly or like any kind of drug like that, like like a hyper drug, I can never have an orgasm. See, and Molly, bitch, you remember I fucked that nigga in the car out after the club, bitch. I was, I wanted some Molly dick, but Coke dick, that shit don't do shit, bro. It's like, hitty dick actually get hard. Coke dick don't get hard, bro. I don't know how you getting hard Coke dick. Maybe they snorting baking powder. Cause bitch, Coke dick be flaccid, bro. It be flaccid. <laughs> I guess someone said in my experience, I don't know, like, Bitch, I be getting them niggas ready, Chad. Anyway, um, I will tell you, since y'all say I'm bringing her up, when me and Scissors used to, like, party hard, like, when we went to Paris, we did some fucking coke, and her and I fucked for, like, three hours, and she was like, bitch, I'm never gonna come, and now it's starting to hurt. I was like, me too, but I don't wanna stop. Bitch, we had to get a barrier for the scissoring. That's how long we was lasting. <laughs> a barrier? All right, all we right. We didn't stop. And we're gonna leave off with one of the sexcapades. Sip and I have to know a story if you've done this. Sip if you've had sex with a staff member of a hotel or resort while staying there. That's wild. Dr. E, you slurping, bitch. Hold on, wait. Who's the girl that working at the hotel right now? Oh, it's a spa. Oh, that's Excuse a spa. Me. Wait, feel- a, lot of, a lot of y'all aren't drinking, and I feel some type of way. Uh, Trey, uh, uh, Jen, Jay. Swap Shay. Damn, a lot of you, this is rhyming. I sound like I'm rapping. Like, damn. Okay, so Dr. E, can you what what hotel was this? Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Go ahead. You done slurped and I saw you slurp. Was he that fine? Did he turn your sheets down? What happened? Oh my God. <laughs> he was at the front desk. <laughs> Bitch, did he lose his job? No. So how do discount codes? Oh, now I still get discount codes. How did you let him know that you wanted him to come to your room? I told him he was cute and he should come to my room. What time you get off? I'm blood. 